globe and welcome to the 1641st edition of Short Term Trading Live with Oscar Carboni. But this evening, we're not just going to talk about short term trading, you'll see that in a moment. This video is being filmed on a Wednesday night for trading Thursday, that is July 6th, 2017. Before we get into the topics on the board and the color of the Omni and all that other great stuff, you must know that futures trading is extremely risky, causes substantial financial loss, and is certainly not suitable for all traders. In reality, you must have risk capital to lose if you are going to play this very volatile game. Remember, always place stops. Place your stops first. There could be slippage when you place stops, especially in very illiquid markets. But park your stops in because, believe me, they are your best friend when you're in trouble. Now, let's get moving. So, for trading on 070617, we start off round of applause with a green on me. Even the S&P, Russell, maybe even the NASDAQ will talk about that. Now, traders, as you've seen in the last 10, 12, 15 days, the NASDAQ has pointed. Now, NASDAQ tends to be a leader in many, on many occasions, but not on all, not, not in all cases, but on many occasions, you will find the NASDAQ, if it starts to move first, the tranny jumps right in, those two start leading, and the market starts to follow. Not always, but that happens often. The NASDAQ pointed. I looked, and you know I'm pretty good at this craft, right? I looked technically every way I could, and I have to say, I cannot make a technical argument for the downside long term. So the NASDAQ had a bit of a pullback. We'll have to look at some charts and, and investigate that a little, which we'll do in this video. This still looks like a perfect storm, in my opinion, for the long-term view that this is going to be your arrow throughout this year and next and who knows how long. Now, of course, the NASDAQ pointing could absolutely be an omen or a prelude to what's to come, but for now, the technical picture that we will see right now for this date, I am going to show you that I cannot, nor will you be able to make a technical argument for the downside. Can it come off for a few days? Sure, markets never go straight up. Are we going to continue moving higher unless something dramatic happens to change our economic landscape? This still looks like a perfect storm. The charts will explain. Then there is this. The dollar and grains, that's coming soon, not in this video, but I will do a video shortly because boy oh boy, the dollar moving down is making the grains take off, and you've heard me talk about this for quite some time, it would be coming, it's starting, so we'll talk about that in the next video for tonight. Again, Green Omni, NASDAQ pointed, I looked, I cannot make a technical argument for the downside, I don't know if you can, we'll compare the charts. Absolutely perfect storm from what I can see. Once again, we'll look at that technically on the charts. And stay tuned for more work on dollars and grains. Traders, with no further ado, let's go look at some charts. Okay, traders, your NASDAQ weekly bar. NASDAQ pointed and I took a look. As you can see, the NASDAQ pointed. This is a weekly bar, so each one of these green lines represents a whole week's worth of trading, five full days. It started to drop, and that was pretty dramatic, and I went to look at a bunch of charts, but of course recognize this. NASDAQ doesn't go straight up. It never will. It never has. It just doesn't go straight up. So we've had a lot of up and down, but mostly up, and here we are right here, and it came back about that far. It doesn't look so different from a lot of the pullbacks, right? Some of them were a little bigger, but a lot of the pullbacks were about that big. So I said, well, let's look a little deeper. Maybe there's more to this. You look at the E-mini S&P, and there is zero reason to think that something's wrong here. That was old. Previous highs had a pullback, rallied up, made newer highs. It happened here. First it made a bull flag, then it rallied up. Right, so rallied up, made newer highs from the past highs. It just continues to happen in a very nice parallel channel, moving towards the upside. So... You know, that doesn't convince me or give me any reason to argue that the NASDAQ's pointing towards the whole market dropping. Then I take the Russell 2000. This is a bull flag that was made completely above previous contract highs. Bull flag looks great. If you really take a look at this Russell chart on the weekly, 
Look at how smart it's been in this parallel channel right here. Touches, 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 touches. Very nice channel. That goes much, much higher. If this is a bull slash Oscarism F flag on the weekly and it pans out at some point, it projects higher. No reason so far whatsoever to agree with NASDAQ thinking or pointing towards the downside. Dow Jones Industrial Average Weekly. Now look at this chart. This flag, so this one did not work, right? Here's a flag, and it just didn't work. That's a bull flag. And the market went down. Wow, it didn't work. However, watch the pattern. Then you have a, a riser, and a bull flag is made. A riser, a bull flag gets made. A riser, a bull flag gets made. A riser, a bull flag gets made. A riser. That is just a pattern. It is continuous. It is repetitive. And there's nothing wrong with thinking that this is simply another riser before we build another bull flag up there. So again, I cannot look at this and find reason for the downside. Yes, we're up here, but we've hit up here, went and made a bull flag and went higher. So you can't think that it's knocking on this door and looking to fail. It's knocking on this door and it's looking to get through it. So again, nothing agreeing with the NASDAQ, which pointed down last week. Transportation average. Now, this should be going lower if the NASDAQ truly was pointing, because a lot of times the NASDAQ and the transportation average point together. Well, these were previous contract highs. We've got a flag well above that now. You have broken out of the flag, made completely all-time new contract highs from here, bounced off the 50-ball moving average, bounced off, bounced off. It looks great. Again, I cannot find any reason to come up with an argument to agree with the NASDAQ. Then you come to a daily, even the S&P. 50 ball moving average, bounce, rally, back to it again, bounced off, rally, back to it again, bounced off, major rally, at it again, bounced off. The next words I'm supposed to say is rally. Right? Isn't that the pattern that do you guys, are you following along back there? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. If that's the case, I should be saying, okay, rally next, because that's what happens after you hit the average. So, again, even on the daily, I cannot find a reason to argue for more downside. Russell 2000, look at this. Nice upward pattern on the daily. Clearly, you've got a pennant flag building here. That would be bullish. On the dailies and the weeklies, I cannot argue for the NASDAQ. Then there's the NASDAQ itself. Bingo, it hits my Omni average and spends the entire day today moving higher on Wednesday. Is it going to just hold and take off from here? There's a few ways to look at it. I've been calling bear flag in the NASDAQ for some time, and yes, it absolutely created one. And we broke down from the bear flag. Maybe this was the projection, and that's it. Done. Bear flag worked, bounces off the average, and away we go. Maybe NASDAQ itself is now pointing back up. So I think the whole argument turned out to be bullish, not bearish, and that's why I'm presenting it to you. I was looking for a bearish argument, did my analysis, this is what I came up with, not bearish. Dollar index now. If the NASDAQ is pointing lower and none of the other indices are agreeing with it, I say not yet, we're not going lower. Perfect storm, look at the dollar index. Now you would think that's in a tailspin, but it's just a very inexpensive dollar right now. It was almost 104, it's only in the 96 area, it's not cheap, but it's certainly not expensive. Perfect storm, dollar moving lower while the stock market's moving higher. Then you've got this, 30-year T-bonds. Even though the Fed is raising rates, T-bonds going up inherently lowers interest rates. If you don't think that's the case, if you had a teeter-totter and you put 30-year interest rates over here and you put raising rates over here, it goes one side goes down and the other side goes up. If they raise rates, rates get raised, this goes up. If they do the opposite, bonds go, well, excuse me, I'm sorry. When they raise rates, bonds go down. That's what's supposed to happen. When they lower rates, bonds go up. So they're raising rates, bonds are going up. What I'm showing you is that inherently we are knocking the price of bonds or the price of interest rates back down when we raise the price of bonds. So in other words, if this is happening, that's happening. There's no two ways about it. Even though the Fed is raising them, traders are buying bonds and knocking the rate back down. Part of the perfect storm. I hope I'm not losing you here. Then there's this. 
crude oil. The price of crude, and you know we made this tremendous call when it was at 52 and it would drop all the way to 37. It's on its way down, had a little rally for the holiday reversal. It's already on its way back down, but the point is the price of crude is cheap and getting cheaper. That is part of the perfect storm. If the price of crude is cheap, it's cheap transportation. That means any company that makes a product can sell that product, and when they move the product, it costs them less to move it. This helps. I don't see an argument for NASDAQ anywhere in here. Then you've got this. Maybe what's pulling back the NASDAQ, because it's made up of major stocks, Apple being one. Apple drops into a bear flag. I've been showing this to you in many videos in the last couple of weeks. And it's below the Omni average. That makes up part of the NASDAQ. And if you ask me, this is some strange head and shoulders right there. So that's Apple. This is one of the reasons why NASDAQ pulls back. Then you've got a market or a stock like Tesla. Has been going up for quite some time, but now has broken. There's a channel right here. I don't know if you can see it, but you've got a channel right here. And it started to break this channel. And it's now below the on the average. And this is a major part of the NASDAQ. And then you've got something like this. Once again, we go back to the dollar index. It is moving lower. And it should absolutely help the stock market move higher. None of it makes sense right now that the stock market would go lower. Amazon, part of Apple. Excuse me. Amazon, part of NASDAQ. This looks a lot like what the NASDAQ did recently. Had a fat pullback. So maybe this is why the NASDAQ's pulling back. And maybe it's not a signal that the rest of the market's ready to crack. So again, I went out and I said, all right, NASDAQ, you've been talking for a couple of weeks. What are you trying to tell us? Here's the argument I've come up with. Maybe a few stocks are pulling back NASDAQ. Unless this turns out to be the beginning of the end, I don't see it turning into a downward market. Traders, come on down to livewithoscar.com and see for yourselves. Okay, traders, that is my technical argument for why I couldn't find a technical argument for the NASDAQ calling for the downside. Again, I hope I didn't lose you during the chart segment, but I started or I approached this thinking that the NASDAQ was going to show me some evidence, and then I'd pull up a bunch of other charts, and I'd be in front of this video camera tonight saying to you, this is why we're going to start to move lower, and that is absolutely not what happened. What happened to me is what I just showed you when I did the chart segment. It completely convinced me of the opposite, that even if we head down a little, up is the direction we're going to be in for some time. Traders, I hope that illustrates it well to you technically. Come on down to livewithoscar.com. Come to my free live trading room. Speaking of which, you will see a lot of site changes. The look of the site's going to change. Enhancements are coming your way. If you get confused when you come to the site, which will look new very shortly, just give us a call, 702 six two nine four seven five five i'd like to thank my buddy tony so now tone unexpected but you got to come up here come on tony come here tony she's a my programmer and great friend he has been helping me to revamp the site and any of the changes that you see he is certainly a huge part of what goes on here so tony thank you very much brother you'll see the changes this is the man that you can thank for it when it um, breaks call him and his home. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good friend of his who's helping him program. All right, traders. So thank you very much. Live with Oscar.com. I'll see you there. Remember, keep your emotions out of trading. One of the best things you can do, in my opinion, to help try to keep those emotions at bay. Believe me, it's not easy, but try this. Say this to yourselves every morning, every afternoon, every evening. And you know what that is. Stops are in. Emotions are out. Rock and roll traders, remember, this thing so far does not look like it's going to end up going down this summer. Futures trading is risky and can cause substantial financial loss. We do not claim or guarantee that you will profit from the information provided.